What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 31 and we start today's episode off with some player training as per usual and also some emails here as you see confirmation that Fitzpatrick our Irish 16 year old has been loaned out to West Bromwich Albion for a year so he's gone for the rest of the season and also half of next season as well at the Hawthorns and also John Egan comes to us too and says he needs to play more often the amount of matches he's getting to play at the moment isn't good for his career and I said to John I said you still got your place in the squad mate and that is true but this sort of shows you how quickly things can change in football. Last year, John Egan was considered our best centre-back as part of our back five. This year, the Irishman is now fourth choice. He's 28 years old. He's grown one rating this year, up to 76 overall. And if you remember last season, we got lots and lots of bids for Egan uh, from, from decent European teams as well. I remember Wolves putting a bid for him. I think it was Sporting also putting a bid for Egan as well, which we rejected because at the time, we needed him. But now I'm not against letting him go. I'm not going to put him on the transfer list but he's played 11 games this season we've only kept one clean sheet out of 11 games when he's been in the uh, starting five so starting five at the back so that that sort of says it all really Egan this season has not been quite as good as last year now he's got McKenna O'Connell and also the new man Ben Godfrey starting ahead of him in his place as well as part of our back five so yeah if Egan gets if a big comes in for John Egan I'm not gonna let him go for anything less than market valuation but if it's a decent bid I'm, I'm not gonna reject all the bids like I did last year I'm going to consider letting him go for the good of his career and uh, I think we'd probably do with the money as well to reinvest in a different position in our squad but still taking on Manchester City for the first game in today's episode here coming on the back of our home defeat to Brighton just a few days prior this one coming in midweek no Kyle Walker in goal for Manchester City in this game but it was Christian Eriksen that would fire the hosts in front in this match as Pep Guardiola's side would take the lead right for the break we were defending really well in the first 40 minutes as well we changed our side around a lot on the back of that defeat to Brighton on the weekend with this game coming just a few days before the FA Cup fourth round tie against Norwich City as well and again we were defending really well but unfortunately it just takes one chance and one lapse of concentration and a team like City will punish you and that's what happened in the second half as well. Six minutes after the restart I dilly dallied on the ball with Oliver Norwood, tried to clear the ball with the captain took way too long to press the circle button City robbed in and eventually as De Bruyne feeds Sergio Aguero, the Argentine makes it 2-0 and just a few minutes later this is a common feat we're seeing throughout the course of the series so far well two common themes actually one is rebound goals because we concede so many rebound goals we must concede at least one rebound goal in episode mate it's crazy and they're also conceding goals directly after conceding a goal prior to that one like minutes after just minutes after we concede one we seem to concede another one straight away great block by Wood there sliding in or it might be headed to making a save one of the two but straight back to Kevin De Bruyne for his 13th of the year Man City 3 Sheffield United 0 and the game was done and we did rest a lot of players heading into the game because we expected to lose this match here and lose it by quite a few goals as well. If you remember last season at the Etihad, we lost 6-0. It's our worst defeat of the series so far and this could have been 6-0 and probably should have been 6-0 as well. City had golden chances in this game to extend the lead and uh, improve their goal difference record as they continue to play ch uh, chase to uh, Liverpool right now but Henderson made some great saves in this game and uh, if it wasn't for Dean, we would have lost this game by a lot more goals. So 3-0 the final score, City get the win. Again, we, we expect us to lose the game and despite three straight wins on the road for Sheffield United, heading into that match, you know, beating Burnley at Turf Moor, Everton at Goodison Park and then of course high-flying West Ham away in London as well in our last away game. Three very impressive victories on the trot away from home. We expected to lose that game so I wasn't really surprised it did end as a 3-0 defeat. But uh, still, following that, you saw there our transfer budget again it's around 3.5 million pounds in our budget right now after the sale of Luke Freeman uh, in the last episode and of course as we know Ben Foster right now has said he's going to be leaving the club come the end of the season he's out of contract at the end of the season so that was always going to be the case anyway if he didn't decide to retire so I did decide to try something a little bit sneaky here and uh, try and pick up a new goalkeeper swap Foster out of the club and bring in someone younger perhaps a little bit better and only have to pay a little bit of money as well and of course after the game against Cardiff a few weeks ago I thought Neil Etheridge would be a brilliant signing for us you know he's the same rating as Foster right now and he's seven years younger but Neil Warnock I mean I wasn't really looking like Neil Warnock but it was Neil Warnock who came to my office he stormed out of there very quickly not surprised for Warnock's kind of rage but either way Warnock stormed out after my low ball offer there for his Philippines number one and uh, then I met Sean Deitch and I thought I'd discuss Joe Hart who of course we could have signed Joe Hart last year on a pre-contract in the end opted for uh, Ben Foster I kind of wish I would have gone for uh, Hart now but 
But uh, Sean Deitch, again, said he wasn't interested in the players we were trying to swap for him. And uh, the last one I tried was West Bromwich Albion. Sam Johnston uh, playing at the Hawthorns right now. For those who don't watch the championship, right now the Baggies are top of the table at the time of recording this commentary anyway. And uh, Sam Johnston will be a brilliant backup to have playing deputy to Dean Henderson a few years younger, but about the same rating. I thought he'd be a brilliant signing for us. But once again, as you can see, that the chance of this bid coming off was incredibly unlikely because whilst Foster right now is only one rating lower than Johnston, what you've got to remember is that he's 10 years older and he's likely to retire come the end of next season. So West Brom said they'd think about the bid. It was 3.5 mil plus a big sell-on clause and Foster for their number one. But again, the chance of that happening is, is very slim. It, when, when a manager walks out of the office and says, we'll think about it and doesn't agree to it there and then, it's almost definitely not going to come off. So yeah, I can't see that deal going through. And uh, I think we'll be keeping Foster until the end of the season and uh, it'll just be leaving on a free transfer come the end of his first year at the club, which is totally fine with me anyway, because that was the plan regardless. You know, we just thought he'd be retiring come the end of the season. Instead, he's got no plans to retire. So we'll just let him go on a free transfer. And uh, as a backup goalkeeper between now and the end of the season, for, you know, stepping in for Dean when required, that's totally fine. I don't mind that one bit. If the deal is going to come off, it'll be a good deal. Otherwise, not too bothered either way. Anyway, second and final game on today's episode, taking on Norwich City away at Carrow Road in the FA Cup fourth round. Picking a really strong lineup for the game as well on the back of that 3-0 loss away in midweek against Manchester City. Uh, obviously, you're right now, of course, in the Premier League. We're, we're, we're looking relatively safe already. Still about 14 games to go in the season. So taking on Norwich at Carrow Road, yes, it's a cup competition. And in previous career modes, I would be fielding a weak inside for it. But now I want to go for this. I really, really do. You know, we just about scraped past Cardiff City, another championship side in the third round. Now taking on Norwich City. They're also flying high in the championship right now in the game. And unfortunately for us, 24 minutes in, we would fall behind as well. John Fleck was forced off through injury after picking up a knock early on in the game and 24 minutes in Buendia I'm not sure about the celebration no idea what he was trying to do but the goal he knew exactly what he was doing for this wraps his right leg around it bends it beautifully and Ben Foster stepping in nothing he could have done about that Sam Johnston Joe Hart Neil Etheridge Dean Henderson whoever in goal would not have stopped that one what a strike by Buendia and Norwich are in front but in the 33rd minute we would get ourselves back on level terms and what a surprise Ollie Shaw having a fantastic sophomore season here at Sheffield United storming down left hand side after Tyler Griffiths the academy boys linked up Shaw goes down the left whips in a driven cross in the middle and who's there to turn it in Callum Robinson he hasn't scored a goal in the Premier League in quite a few weeks now but he did score the goal to put us through to this round against Cardiff in the FA Cup third round what can I say Callum clearly loves the Cups it's 1-1 back on level terms courtesy of our Irish strikers so Norwich won Sheffield United won but past Yarmouk once again more frustration for the Blades Ollie Hall battles his man in midair and lands awkwardly and is forced off via the stretcher. So he came off with the injured Fleck in the first half. Now he's forced off for injury himself. So many injuries for Sheffield United this season. It's crazy. As in the 66th minute there, Tony headed that Ravel Morrison corner just wide the post. And with 30 minutes to go, a golden chance for the championship side to get in front for the second time in the game, retake the lead and possibly send us out. And Joseph Dermich, wow, what a miss, what a chance and what relief on the side lines is the canaries failed to get the goal that would have sent them through and that should have been the goal that would have sent them through. Final score, 1-1. We do avoid the cup set. We'll be heading for a replay at Brownwell Lane and based on our home form of late, I'm not overly confident taking on the championship side in that replay and we're going to be without Ollie Hall for it as well. The young 16-year-old has done his ACL just like Moussa did a few weeks ago. He's out for seven months. That is our fourth ACL in two seasons. Thankfully, flex injury is just a five-day bruised shoulder, but for, for, for Ollie Hall, getting that ACL, he started the season off really well. He's an exciting prospect, as we know, and now to be out for the rest of the season, absolutely gutted about that, because I like this kid. One of the kids at the academy that I've got quite high hopes for in the future, but unfortunately, won't see him again for the rest of the season. He's done, and uh, I must admit, I, I, I have, um, for those that have been asking, I have uh, upped the injury frequency and injury severity sliders. I believe the frequency is now 70 and the severity is 60. I'm thinking about knocking the severity slider down to about 55 but keeping the frequency where it is because again it's more realistic to our seasons like this where we're getting injuries here and there because that is you know it's real life football isn't it you know all, all clubs are going to have uh, injuries throughout the season when you keep the sliders at 50 they, they barely get injured at all throughout the season but I think I might knock the severity one down just a little bit because you know four ACLs in two seasons is a little bit tough but uh, either way uh, Hall's done for the season and 
and uh, gutted about that because again he's played well in the three games he's been on the pitch for us and also Chris Basham our 32 year old centre half out of contract in the summer uh, available to be poached away on a free transfer for next season a Turkish side put in a pre-contract offer for him and if he wants to go that's totally fine with me I was going to let him go on a free transfer anyway come the end of the season again he's 32 years old now he's decreasing in his attributes as well if he wants to go and secure a bag in Turkey I'm totally fine with that as West Brom do end negotiations for Jam- uh, Sam Johnston as we expected but that was today's episode of Career Mode guys so a big thank you for watching really hope you have enjoyed it. if you did enjoy today's episode then please drop a like no like target today there is a guaranteed double upload but if you would like to leave a like I would appreciate it very much have a great Sunday guys and I'll see you for the next episode very soon